Hello and welcome to my first video under the Tech Distractions channel name. I'm very much a newbie to creating content and will be experimenting with formats and ideas as I go along. I've made this video for GPU June 2 in which retro YouTubers like myself celebrate the 3D accelerator during the month of June. A big thank you to Pixel Pipes for starting this initiative, inspiring people like me to rig up a camera and mic and join in. As you can tell by the title, I've gone a different path to most and decided to look at the absolute bottom end of 3D Accelerator Graphics, the venerable iGPU, or Integrated Graphics Processing Unit. iGPUs originally started as a separate chip integrated into budget-orientated motherboards, often missing dedicated graphics card slots like AGP or PCI Express. Today we're looking at one from VIA called Unichrome. We'll put it through its paces and see if it can give us any retro 3D gaming fun. The Unichrome has a lengthy history. We can draw a dotted line back to the very beginnings of 3D accelerators coming out from a now defunct company called S3. In 1995, S3 released The Verge, or Virtual Reality Graphics Engine, and its S3D API, which was largely ignored. It was relegated to the budget market, and any semblance of 3D acceleration was quickly evaporated when you actually tried to use it for that purpose. A few years later, The Verge was updated to the Trio 3D. It had a minor spec bump. Both chipsets continued to be updated for another two years or so. In 1998, S3 released The Savage 3D, which was seen by many as the first decent 3D card from S3. It introduced the S3 texture compression and ditched the unpopular S3D API from the Verge era. In 1999, S3 had a few more goes with the Savage 4, introducing the Metal API, and it showed a bit of promise. During this period, S3 had a merger with Diamond and released a horrible, broken card, the Savage 2000. Phil's computer lab has got an excellent video on this. It's linked below. During 2001, VIA purchased the S3 graphics components and took the Savage 4 3D engine and the Savage 2000 2D engine and made the Pro Savage integrated graphics. This was VIA's very first iGPU using its own IP. This was presumably a cost-saving measure as VIA was currently licensing the integrated graphics solutions from Trident around that time. This brings us to the iGP in this video. In 2002, Unichrome was released. It was essentially the Pro Savage with an updated video engine. 3D was largely unchanged from the 1999 Savage 4 and boy did it show. It was quickly relegated to the budget boards and thin clients, and was seen more of as an office multimedia graphics chip rather than the gaming one. The motherboard we're looking at today is the Gigabyte PCV2 DSi, which contains our CLE266 Unichrome IGP, a VIA C3 Nehemiah CPU at 1GHz. It runs on the 133MHz frontside bus with a 75 multiplier and uses DDR266 for memory. So let's take a look at it in action. Three, two, one, go! Ugh. 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 
now we've seen a couple of games running, let's see how we fared on the benchmarks. Looking at the results for GeoQuake, we get a reasonable 56.8 frames per second on the 480p benchmark. Applying a CPU overclock to 10.5x up from 7.5x, we can squeeze a little bit past the 60 frames per second barrier. I was unsuccessful in overclocking the CPU using PowerStrip, and I couldn't get S3 Tweak to work with Unichrome. It might need more research. Expendable did get a bump of about 6 frames per second with the CPU overclocked, a reasonable 36.35 frames per second on average. In Turok we see some really solid frame rates here, a nice boost with the overclock. Incoming really like the overclock, an extra 14 frames per second over a stock at 480p. Gains are smaller in the higher resolution modes, but are still okay. Forsaken is another one that really likes the Unichrome. We get very close to 60 frames per second at 768p, and crack the ton at 480p. Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed was measured using fraps in a quick race. I try to hit the few cars and cause some effects to get a good gauge of the frame rates. At 480p on the lower settings, we get a playable 53.29 frames per second when overclocked. I would say the game doesn't look great in this mode, and certainly the sound doesn't either, but bumping up the detail to higher, we quickly drop off to get more of a cinematic frame rate in the 20s. Quake 3 is a similar story. We get a good boost with the overclock using the fastest preset. It does seem to hold on during the busy scenes, but only just. In the synthetics, we get some lowly results. PC Player Direct 3D Benchmark gives us 60 frames per second at 480p, even without an overclock, but drops away pretty badly from there. 3D Mark 2001 SE is woefully low at 969 marks. The lack of features like transform and lighting really contribute to a low score. Okay, so let's wrap this up. The C3 CPU is not too bad and can hold its own despite some pretty severe limitations. It performs about the same as a lower speed Pentium 3 copper mine for gaming. The same cannot be said for the Unichrome IGP. It performs a bit more like an early AGP card, something like a Nvidia TNT, and is definitely suited for less demanding 3D titles and lower resolutions. This all being said, if you're stuck with one of these and you don't want to shell out for a PCI 3D solution, which is going to be very expensive, fun can still be had with the Unichrome. Just be prepared for some tweaking and some compromise. And if you're still here, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed checking out the Unichrome IGP. I had a lot of fun playing with it and I intend to make a few follow-up videos in the future. See you next time. Three, two, one, go!